This video will continue our discussion of conservation of momentum by considering the inelastic collisions. The collisions where two objects stick together. Again, in uh, my classes we're not doing partial cases of uh, partially elastic or partially inelastic. They're just elastic collisions. The objects bounce off of each other and kinetic energy is conserved. For the inelastic collisions, our objects will stick together after the collision. There will only be one object after the collision, and kinetic energy is not conserved, but still, momentum will be conserved as long as the net external force is equal to zero. Again, we must have the net external force equal to zero. So, example of this, two objects approaching each other, and as they collide, uh, there's some latching or some stickiness, and they lock together. And this actually makes the calculation fairly easy. Before the collision, we have two uh, MVs to calculate. Again, be careful. Velocity is a vector. One of these velocities is a negative. There could be other situations where one object is catching up to an object that's also traveling to the right, and both velocities would be positive. But in this example, one object is approaching the other object, one velocity is a negative. You will calculate the total momentum before the collision, mv for each object, add those together. And then afterwards, so only be a single m. It'll be m plus m in this example that's being shown. It'll be a, a single object though, and we'll have a single velocity. This total mass here times the final velocity will equal the sum of the individual MVs that we had before the collision. So it's a very straightforward calculation. It's just uh, find MV individually for the two masses before the collision. After the collision, you use the sum of the masses as the mass in the MV calculation. Uh, so in this example, we have a um, hockey puck that's moving. The goalie is not moving, and we're saying that the uh, goalie does not dig uh, the ice skates into the ice, but just have a frictionless surface here. And as the capture occurs, uh, it will be mass of the hockey puck plus mass of the goalie times the final velocity. So we've lost kinetic energy because uh, the hockey puck... Um, does heat up locally the uh, pads of the of the goalie so we've lost kinetic energy we can also have inelastic quote-unquote collisions if uh, some system is uh, sitting with an energized spring a compressed spring and some trigger lets that spring expand that will push the objects away from each other and the objects become separated then we'll have two objects after the event one object before the event, the spring plus whatever mass was on the spring, and now the kinetic energy increases when we have the energy released from the spring. So the inelastic collisions, the kinetic energy is changing. The kinetic energy is not constant. You just have to make a good drawing, label the pieces of the drawing, identify the mass and the velocity of each object, calculate the MVs before the collision, and set that equal to MV after the collision. Here's the example of the spring, and here an object is approaching another object and then bouncing off. Uh, on the air track, again, we can say that there's no uh, net external force. This friction is, uh, is very little. Um, then they've had a compressed spring mounted to this mass before the collision. After the collision, that spring is expanded, and that's delivered kinetic energy to the system. But momentum will still be conserved. And you'll use the uh, same method, calculate MV for each object before the collision. And here there are two objects after the collision. You'll calculate MV for both of those, and one thing in there will be an unknown. So various problems can be set up. Um, now, collisions in two dimensions, if we don't have head-on collisions, we have kind of a glancing blow. So, uh, playing uh, billiards, uh, one ball does not strike the other ball directly head-on, but on the side a little bit. Then we'll have to work the problem twice. We'll have to 
find the components of the velocity, uh, any velocity that's not along our x or y direction, and you're free to choose where the x and y axes are as long as they're perpendicular to each other, that you can uh, choose the x-axis any place that you want. But any velocity that is not along the x-axis or nor along the y-axis, it's some angle in between, you will need to calculate the components of that velocity and use those in two separate calculations. You'll conserve momentum in the x-direction using the basic principles. Calculate mass times the x-component of velocity for each object. Add those up. That will equal mass times the x component of velocity after the event. And do that again for the y direction. Mass times the y component of the velocity for each object. Sum that up. That will equal mass times the y component after the uh, event occurs. Uh, so an example of this, a little off-center hit of uh, M1 and M2. The objects come off at angles. Uh, we will work this problem uh, again in an easy way of uh, taking the uh, components of the, um, the velocity after the collision. And for my particular class, it's more likely you'd see a problem where both objects are moving at first and uh, they collide and go off at some angle. You'll have to conserve momentum in the x-direction separately from calculating conservation momentum in the y-direction. Uh, so go on beyond that. little rocket scientist work for you here. Um, why do rockets go up from the Earth? Well, there must be some force on the rocket upward that is greater than the weight of the rocket. And what provides that is the burning of fuel in the rocket engine. These gases become very hot and have high speeds. The gas pushes on the rocket, makes it go forward. Also, the rocket pushes on the gas. It's Newton's third law situation. So the gas comes out here, a little uh, blob of mass, they're calling delta M in this drawing, comes out at a velocity V. That's momentum in one direction. The rocket is going to gain momentum in the other direction. And as you know, from watching uh, rocket launches, as you do daily, I'm sure, the uh, uh, acceleration of the rocket increases as it moves away from the launch pad. It's using up fuel, so there's less mass, less inertia in here as time goes on. And based pretty much the same uh, force of the gas on the rocket, so the acceleration picks up. The acceleration is not constant, typically. Acceleration increases as the weight of the fuel in the rocket, the unused fuel, uh, decreases. But it's a conservation momentum problem. Mass going one direction times velocity. That momentum down is uh, has an equal part going up. And the velocity increases for our rocket. And the space shuttle uh, is an example of that. Uh, program no longer active, but um, illustrates this as well. You can see the hot gases going downward here. The rocket moves upward, conserving momentum. So there you have it, inelastic collisions. The objects stick together. And we'll uh, do easy calculations of calculating MV before the collision for both objects, setting that equal to the MV after the collision. And you should practice some of those and uh, read through uh, our textbook and any other materials that you might have available and uh, let your instructor know when you have questions.